The overwhelming majority of victims of terrorism over the last several years, and certainly the overwhelming majority of victims of ISIL, are themselves Muslims. ISIL does not represent Islam. Uh, it is not uh, representative in any way of the attitudes of the overwhelming majority of, of Muslims. Oh, now it's the overwhelming majority of Muslims. It used to be it was an itsy bitsy teensy weensy tiny little percentage. Now they don't represent the overwhelming majority. He didn't even say majority. Joining us now on the Molesburg panel, Andy McCarthy, former federal prosecutor and National Review columnist, and Jonathan Gilliam, former Navy SEAL, former FBI agent, and president, U.S. Continued Service, and CNN analyst also. Hello, gentlemen. All right, uh, Andy. You know, I got to tell you, um, listening to the president talk, not only it turns my stomach because he's, he's obviously a narcissist, and, and most of what he says is how right he is and how wrong everybody else is and everything he's done, and he called this attack a, uh, a setback. Um, but, you know, when he, talk, when he defends, uh, you know, ISIS and, and separates them from, from Islam uh, like he does the other terrorist groups, it, it just, if you don't recognize your enemy, you can't beat them. Yeah, that's right, Steve. And the other thing I, you know, I think that we need to be very modest about what we can say about what reflects the true Islam and try to disconnect that from our national security. Because the, the fact of the matter is, number one, uh, President Obama has no depth in Islamic doctrine, as did, say, the guy I prosecuted years ago, the blind sheikh who is a doctor of Islamic jurisprudence uh, from Al-Azhar University, the seat, the seat of Islamic learning. Uh, Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, has, you know, uh, not as good, but similar uh, academic credentials. These Islamists, and even the jihadists among them, know a lot more about Islam than we do in the United States, number one. And number two, regardless of who's right about what the real islam is if there is any such thing since there's such you know differences of opinion uh, about what the doctrine means the fact of the matter is this is a mainstream interpretation of islam that tens of millions of muslims actually right. follow and we have to defend the country regardless of whether they're right or wrong and and jonathan you know to me it's like in judaism there's, there's reform, there's conservative, there's orthodox, there's the Hasidim. I mean, so, so it would be like Obama coming for, if one of those sects, if, there were, if one of those sects was killing people in the name of, of Judaism, it's like Obama coming out and saying, that's not Judaism. Well, you know what? To them, it is Judaism. And to these, these terrorists, it is Islam. Right. So I, I agree with everything that uh, you and Andy are both saying, but let's just look at it this way. If we can't differentiate or if even Muslims can't seem to differentiate or accept the fact that this uh, what we call radical Islam is a part of Islam, all you have to do is go back and look at history. History, you look at any religion at where it started and you will see the foundation of that religion. And what they're doing now is they're using the same tactics, techniques, and procedures that they did 1,400 years ago and 100 years ago in Armenia. They're just using the technologies that we have today. So it was regional before, but in the beginning with Muhammad, it was a regional move that was trying to spread globally, and it's no different now. Right, let, let me go to you, uh, Jonathan, next here. Um, uh, Peter King uh, told us uh, uh, at the beginning of the show that uh, you know, he, he's, he's horrified that the New York Times, the ACLU, and a judge ended the NYPD Muslim surveillance, uh, surveillance unit. And uh, Donald Trump says, you know, we may have to surveil mosques. We may have to close down mosques. You've been on the ground. What do you say? Well, Andy will be able to tell you uh, surveillance inside and having sources in a mosque uh, is the greatest tool we have. There's no technology better. But at the, at the same time, we have to hold mosques and Muslims that call themselves peaceful. It's really progressive Islam. We have to hold them accountable. And if they're found to have somebody even whispering about an attack or recruitment in their mosque, it should be shut down and investigated. And Andy, of course, uh, mosques in this country have been a breeding ground. Oh, there's no question about that, Steve. In fact, we proved in our terrorism prosecutions in New York that they were areas that were used to uh, recruit, to conspire, even to transfer weapons. Uh, the thing is, and, and, and I think John is, is really onto something here, that the, the thing is that we generally know which are the mosques that are preaching 
a, a forcible militant version of Islam, and which are the ones that are more progressive. And nobody wants to waste their time spying on people who aren't, uh, you know, any threat to the United States. But we can't have kit gloves about a threat uh, that, that is headquartered uh, in these places that have become safe havens because we've taken such a handoff uh, attitude about them. Yeah, and I'm so tired of Barack Obama telling us it's not who we are. Um, a lot of people would say Barack Obama, and this has nothing to do with thinking he's Muslim because he's Christian, uh, is not who we are. Uh, much more ahead on the Steve Malzberg Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep it right here on Newsmax Television. ISIL is not contained. ISIL is expanding. They've just put out a video saying it is their intent to attack this country. And I think we have to be prepared. All right. Uh, contradicting what President Obama has said, of course, uh, rejoining us on the Mulsberg panel, Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Gilliam. Uh, Andy, you know, I, I got to tell you, I've seen liberal media members uh, go after Barack Obama. Uh, today, uh, a CNN reporter asked Barack Obama in Turkey, can't we just uh, d destroy the bastards? Uh, and now DiFi, a, a staunch a liberal, of course, coming out in contradiction of Obama. Uh, does this mean anything significant to you? Yeah, it must mean he's a lame duck and they want Hillary to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, seriously, the, the Islamic State... Uh, John could probably correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I think the Islamic State controls a swath of territory that's roughly the size of Great Britain. Mm -hmm. If that's President Obama's idea of containment, uh, I think we have a, a rather large problem. Okay. John? Well, what, yeah, what about the fact that Dianne Feinstein is out now uh, talking about how ISIS is not contained when it was just Dianne Feinstein that was just out a year ago condemning the CIA for doing their job? Right. I mean, these politicians are so dangerous. The reality is ISIS, or fundamental, see, I'm even making a mistake. Fundamental Islam is very dangerous to the world, but politicians and these terrible, politically correct policies are even more dangerous. Right, I want to ask you about your area of expertise in a second, Jonathan, but it kind of ties into this next bite uh, from President Obama today, uh, talking on the topic of Syrian refugees coming into this country. First, he said that we, we're going to go ahead. We're bringing in, what, 60,000, 100,000 in 017, no stopping us. And then he said this. When I hear political leaders suggesting that there would be a religious test for which person who's fleeing from a war-torn country is admitted, when some of those folks themselves come from families who benefited from protection when they were fleeing political persecution, That's shameful. That's not American. It's not who we are. Now, I'm no brain surgeon, but even I understand the difference in, the, uh, in what he brought up there. Uh, people who are against the, uh, the, the Syrian refugees coming through, even if their uh, ancestors, grandparents, whatever, or parents came to this country escaping persecution, there wasn't a significant segment of that Irish population, Jewish population, Italian population, whomever, Polish population, that was, was sworn to blow up people in the United States. So there's a, an obvious difference there that the president chooses on purpose to gloss over and think that we're too stupid to understand. Jonathan, keeping us safe in New York and Washington, of course, a video is out from ISIS warning America specifically. How important is this Syrian refugee issue? Well, I think it's uh, right now, it is the easiest way for fighters to get in here covertly. Um, the hardest part of attacking the United States is logistics for these guys. Getting the right fighters in here, the, the war-hardened fighters, getting those, those people in here, and then having the, uh, the ammunition and the weapons and the explosives. That's the hardest part. And let me just say this one thing. You know, on the Statue of Liberty, it has, uh, she's holding the, um, the thing in her arm. It says, give us your huddled masses. A lot of people mistake that as uh, the thing that our country was founded upon. Our country was not founded upon uh, a process of having to have immigrants come into this country. Right. It's founded on freedom 
and uh, we have to protect that freedom. And Andy, it, it, it also is your area of expertise, of course, uh, how the terrorists operate and uh, what their intent is. And, you know, using this false analogy with immigration, just like the false analogy, we're all immigrants. I'm not an immigrant. You're not an immigrant. Jonathan's not an immigrant. Uh, but, but, but more importantly, this issue of the Syrian refugees, I mean, doesn't Congress have to stop this? We now have 12 states as of right now, 12. And that has swelled from six to 12 today that will not accept Syrian refugees. Yeah, of, of course, Steve. And, and for President Obama to say what he's uh, describing is un-American is either ignorance on his part or willful misstatement of the facts. We you, don't mean, you mean allow... willful, willful blindness? Well, no. Uh, willful blindness is what, what goes on the rest of Capitol Hill. I don't think there's anything uh, blind right, about it. Right. I was just plugging out one of your former books. Go I, ahead. And I appreciate it. But, you know, look, being in a war zone is not what entitles you to come to the United States. If, if we have a, you know, a legal pathway for people to come in, it's on the basis of being persecuted minorities or, per, or you know, persecuted in the conflict situation. Right. Not everybody is equally persecuted, and very often figuring out who is means that you have to take in, uh, you know, racial characteristics, ethnic characteristics, Absolutely. religious characteristics. Otherwise, you let you're opening the door to everybody, and you don't have a country anymore. And, uh, our, our our legal obligations are about those who are being persecuted. Andy McCarthy, Jonathan Gilliam, thank you both very much. Very interesting discussion. Alan Dershowitz is next. Don't go away, folks.